If you watched our last two videos on medications that cause peripheral neuropathy, they probably left your jaw hanging open when you realized you're taking one, two, or more of the medications that Dr. Montero revealed. Remember, the goal of our video is to educate and empower you on how to take control of your health. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can protect your health and your nerves against the side effects of many of these medications. In part one of this video, I'll explain in simple terms how medications get processed in your body. Then in part two, I'll cover why some people are more prone to developing side effects than others that are on the same drugs. And lastly, stick with me till the end because in part three of this video, I'll share with you simple things that you can do to minimize and potentially stop the harmful side effects and nerve damage caused by medications. Don't go anywhere, it's gonna be good. Hello, Health Explorer. This is Dr. Coppola, the Nerve Doctor. If you've been told your neuropathy is permanent, I'm here to help you achieve new levels of health you've never dreamed possible. So make sure you click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. Also, don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when I publish new content. Okay, let's get started. In our second video of the video series, Medications That Cause Peripheral Neuropathy, you may recall that a huge clinical study consisting of 6,500 participants revealed that medications can cause anywhere between 10 and 100 different side effects. What? Seriously? Unfortunately, this is accurate. But here's what might leave you scratching your head. Why is it while one person on three different medications never experiences any negative effects, and yet another person taking one drug may have a bunch of side effects? Well, the determinant factor is dependent on your liver function. So let's dive into part one. How do medications get processed in your body? The vast majority of medications are taken orally and are broken down within the gastrointestinal tract. Once the meds hit your stomach, it's broken down by stomach acid before it passes through the liver and then enters the bloodstream. When a drug is in the liver, it goes through a process called phase one and phase two detoxification. In phase one, a group of enzymes known as cytochrome P450 will work to modify the active drug to a less harmful state. Then phase two takes over where this less harmful chemical is then handed to another set of molecules, which will then package it up and prepare it for removal from the body through primarily the urine, but sometimes the feces as well. Okay, that's an ultra uh, simplified version of how medications are used and processed in your body. So now let's explore part two. Why do some people experience more side effects from drugs than others? What determines the number of side effects and the severity is how well your phase one and phase two liver detoxification pathways are working. If cytochrome P450 is impaired in any way, it can result in significant adverse reactions to the drugs and it can result in numerous side effects. Now, it's important for you to realize that this family of enzymes doesn't just metabolize medications, but it's also responsible for handling and clearing dangerous chemicals that enter your body, like petroleum, environmental chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, xenobiotics, and xenoestrogens. Many of these chemicals are found in personal care products like parabens that act as hormone disruptors. Even alcohol puts a tremendous burden on our liver. Now, when these chemicals are not properly broken down by cytochrome P450, they become even more reactive and dangerous to the body. You'll begin to experience many side effects from the medications that you're on. Plus, if, you don't get it, if they don't get excreted, they'll build up and get stored in your tissue, which increases the rate of cancer and other debilitating diseases. So let's look at what can cause impairment of cytochrome P450. There can be a, gen a genetic mutation in this family of enzymes. This can only be determined with specific gene testing. These enzymes decrease with age. By age 40, there's a drop in production of this enzyme group, 
and by age 69, there's another significant decline. Also, liver problems like inflamed liver, fatty liver, cirrhosis of the liver, which is scarring of the liver, will inhibit normal function or detoxification. Certain foods can interfere with the action of these enzymes, such as grapefruit and cranberry juice can inhibit the action of cytochrome P450. Many drugs can inhibit the action of cytochrome P450. Some examples are calcium channel blockers, which you've heard us talk about a lot because they play a huge role in causing peripheral nerve damage. So medications that fall into this family are diltiazem, cardiazem, and verapamil. Other medications that can inhibit this pathway are statin drugs for lowering, lowering cholesterol. Also, antibiotics such as fluoroquinolones, especially ciprofloxacin, and even erythromycin. And then there's antidepressants like Zimbalta and Prozac. Also, heartburn medications like cimetidine, tagamet, omeprazole, and Prilosec. Also, anticoagulants or blood thinner medications like warfarin. Also, acute alcohol use, which is a large consumption of alcohol within a short period of time. Or chronic alcohol consumption can inhibit the uh, action of these enzymes. Now, let's get to the really good stuff. Part three, how do you protect yourself against possible side effects from drugs that you have to take? If you're even on one medication, you wanna make sure you have maximum protection against possible side effects and further damage from the meds. Now, if you're on three or more medications, I can't stress how imperative this is for your overall health as well as for the recovery of your nerves. In order to protect yourself, you need to enhance phase one and phase two detoxification pathways, and here's how you do that. First, take glutathione. Glutathione is naturally produced by our cells. However, as we age, our bodies produce less and less. Glutathione is considered to be the most powerful cellular antioxidant that can neutralize toxins and eliminate them. It's often termed the master antioxidant. It's important to realize that when you take any medication, the body treats it as a dangerous toxin because, well, it is. Medications may help control our symptoms, but it's also a toxic chemical that alters our body's phys physiological pathways. The challenge with taking glutathione supplement is that it's almost entirely destroyed by our natural digestive enzymes in the stomach and the small intestines. But there are a few ways to work around this. Take a glutathione supplement only in the form of S-acetylglutathione or liposomal glutathione. This is a glutathione molecule that's encapsulated inside a lipid or liquid fat. Now, both of these forms significantly protect a glutathione from being destroyed in the stomach and the intestines. Now, another thing that you can do is take a supplement called N-acetylcysteine or NAC which is another powerful antioxidant that can boost glutathione. What I especially love about NAC is that not only will it replenish your glutathione levels, but it will also help reduce inflammation in your lungs that can assist with respiratory infections, bronchitis, influenza, COPD, and even COVID infection. Okay, another way we can boost our glutathione levels is to eat more foods that boost glutathione production. This would be things like cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli, cauliflower, and arugula. Now you've heard me mention arugula many times because it is the highest nitrate level which gets converted to nitric oxide. Now you know it helps phase one and phase two detoxification as well. Isn't that awesome? Other cruciferous veggies are kale, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and the list goes on. Also, foods in the allium family like garlic and onions will increase glutathione, as do herbs and spices such as curcumin and rosemary. Now, surprisingly, even ghee can elevate glutathione levels. Now, there may be a few of you out there that are cheering because you're already eating these foods, and that's great. You truly deserve a pat on the back because I can guarantee you, you're part of the minority. But it's important to note when trying to protect yourself from the medication's side effects, you can't do it just by consuming these foods alone. This is because you would need to eat an enormous amount of these veggies to get an adequate amount of glutathione. Next, there is a supplement called milk thistle that will help regenerate the liver 
and help phase one and phase two detoxification pathways. Now, let's talk about supplements that reduce free radicals and help prevent glutathione depletion. These are vitamins and minerals like B6, magnesium, selenium, curcuminoids from turmeric, silymarin from milk thistle, folate, and R-alpha lipoic acid. Lastly, the most inexpensive thing you can do to boost your glutathione levels is intermittent fasting. So here's the final takeaway I want you to leave with. Improper liver detoxification, whether it's a problem with phase one or phase two pathway, can lead to a lot of inflammation in the body, horrific side effects from your medications, and new drug-related illnesses, not to mention worsening of your peripheral neuropathy. But if you apply the principles you learned in this video, you can minimize these side effects. The other thing I want you to consider is that there's always a natural alternative that can be used effectively to manage any medical condition. However, your family doctor and internal medicine doctor or even your cardiologist won't know about these because it's not in their specialty. Their specialty requires that they prescribe drugs to treat symptoms. So you'll need to seek out a doctor in your area that specializes in functional medicine. And I'll provide a link in the description below so you can find one near you. Well, that's it for now, Health Explorers. If you have any questions or concerns we didn't answer in this video, leave us a comment and we'll be sure to answer your questions. Until next time, my friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great health. Also, heartburn medications like cimetidine, tagamet, omeprazole, and prilosex. <laughs> prilosex. <laughs> tagamet, omeprazole, and prilosex. <laughs> uh, Prilosec. <laughs> Prilosec. <laughs>